you mentioned that you checked upon a variety of projects, organizations, and then you decided that Rocket Chat is something which you resonate with. So what did you like about Rocket Chat? And did you know the tech stack first, or you just wanted to learn the tech stack on the go and make sure the project say the way you learn about it? There is no possible way that you'll know everything about uh, hmm. an organization's tech stack or even a uh, sub project under that organization uh, that was part of a tech stack. Like it's really difficult to uh, learn right. everything and then start contributing. Right. So, uh, yeah. So to answer your question, like uh, it's not like we just started with development when we started open source. Hmm. We were okay. doing development since around an year before that. Yeah. So now that you are in open source for almost 10 months and a year, how do you suggest a newbie to start contributing to open source and get involved with the space? You really uh, can't not know anything and start diving into that hmm. project. Right. You ha have to have some background with the tech stack. And usually the tech stack is mentioned uh, in the readme of the project, like what they're using, their, uh, like their architecture, uh, at least uh, really good organizations that want contributions. Uh, at least they mentioned this very well. So Hinitya, what stood out to me about both of you was you both of you got selected in the same organization. So I want to ask you, do you feel that as you were roommates and you both were contributing to the same organization, you got to share notes and you know, you could collaborate better being roommates in real world. Like, uh, uh, see, the thing is, I won't say only OSS, but if we are together, uh, I think we, we are able to solve like any problem that comes across us. Like it's, it's not just about OSS. It's, it's about our friendship, right? Many of the people just think it's, uh, it's, it's competition and all. I, I can really understand, like, these are the very important aspects of, um, two people, uh, wants to, you know, yeah, getting somewhere, but if, uh, if like if he as just palani said like it's it's not about us being like coming to oss then after that we start a collaboration it's uh, it's about it's it's before that right when we made that project for our club it's hmm. uh, yeah. it was not like we we are about to get something or something like that it's we just we just had fun working together we, we like we liked it like so like that is that is from where the collaboration comes from that is what that is i would say the habit of collaborating it's it's not like uh, uh, if you are doing better, I I would be you know uh, in OSS. If you are doing better, I would be competing with yourself, and I would try to get ahead of you. But instead, I can hmm. get your support, and I can learn from you, right? So that, this is what works for us. Like sometimes I help him, sometimes he helps him. We just share our notes behind the scenes right. in the same organization, communicating and saying so. That all helps uh, us, right? Collaboration is is the key to open source, I would say. And it has helped us a lot to grow. Right. Getting into open source as a beginner sometimes can be overwhelming, right? You have to go through large code bases. You have to communicate with people from different time zones. So did you face any problems when you initially got introduced to open source? Doing any task for the first time, you will face problems, right? Like, uh, diving into a world where it's not you really maintaining the project, but there's someone else that maintains the project as a whole, whole team. You have to collaborate with them, uh, and then get their suggestions and then work on that particular issue or uh, a pull request. So yeah, it was uh, definitely difficult starting out, but as soon as we like uh, even uh, like we started attending Twitter spaces in which mm -hmm. like very initially this was so over there people guided us like how to get started and uh, it's really like you can find this in information anywhere uh, like uh, there are awesome uh, people like Kunal Gushwaha etc uh, Eddie Zhao so uh, they give these uh, basic guidelines but what you do with these guidelines is upon you it's it's completely upon you so yeah people suggested that you have to reach out to the maintainers uh, you have to attend community meetups and uh, you actually have to collaborate with others uh, so uh, 
at the start it will be difficult but as time progresses uh, it will get much more fun to collaborate and working on a real project so it's just about i would say uh, consistency like uh, the thing is if you are like consistent if you are like working on a problem and uh, like like if you start if you like start it uh with the maintainers when you started you will face some problems the code base is not really that you have expected it it can be something like that because the project that we make and the ecosystem the oss ecosystem how things work that can be like completely different because many of the people are just collaborating over them there and it's it's not like you only working on the project it's like thousands of people are working on the same project so that make it difficult but like once you make maybe a small change maybe a small suggestion i i remember i uh, like rocket chat is a, the the main server is a as a big repo but uh, like initially i just only made a, a line of change but that was very significant and was solving a problem so for that i had to write a bigger mm-hmm. explanation yeah. and like many of the people connected to me on that same explanation we discussed and i also gave uh, get some view points so i think with consistency you you consistently engage with the community and that makes things like very easy you get familiarized with the code base and things go smoother when you become consistent